Jamie continues to be escorted by Brienne to King's Landing. On their way there, they are spotted by a traveler. Jamie urges Brienne to kill the traveler, since he believes the man recognized him and will give away their whereabouts, but she refuses. Later, the pair have to cross a river, which means they can either attempt a dangerous fording or take the bridge, which will probably be watched. Brienne takes the safer route of the bridge. Jamie distracts Brienne and grabs her spare sword. He cut his bonds and they engage in an extended sword fight on the bridge. Jamie, one of the most skilled swordsmen in all of Westeros, nearly overcomes Brienne several times. However, Jamie's mobility is reduced because his hands are still manacled, and he is malnourished after having spent the past full year chained up in a cell. Jamie begins to tire, and Brienne wears him down further by making simple body blows with kicks and punches. After a protracted fight, Jamie finally slumps to the ground in exhaustion, after being thrown off balance. Just then, riders from House Bolton, guided by the traveler who spied them earlier, arrive led by a man named Locke, who gives the traveler silver for his services. Jamie tries to negotiate, but Locke replies that he will be executed by Rob if he lets the King's Lair go free, so both he and Brienne are taken prisoner. As they ride along, the Bolton men sing a rousing chorus of the Bear and the Maiden Fair. Tied up back to back on one of the horses, Jamie warns Brienne that when they make camp for the night, they will rape her, more than once, and that his honest advice is to give no resistance, and just think of Renly. They were only sent to capture Jamie, therefore Brienne means nothing to them, so at the slightest provocation they will kill her without hesitation. Brienne says she will fight even if they kill her, and Jamie agrees that if he were a woman, he would fight to the death before being raped, too. Later that night, Locke's men make camp, and do indeed drag Brienne kicking and screaming into the bushes to gang rape her. Jamie is disgusted by this pointless brutality, so tells he Locke that Brienne is actually a noblewoman and the sole heir of Lord Selwyn Tarth, who rules the Sapphire Isle, which, Jamie says, mines all the sapphires in Westeros, and her father will pay them her weight in sapphires as a ransom, provided she is unharmed. Locke agrees and calls his men back before they are able to rape Brienne, and they tie her up to a tree again. Emboldened by his success, Jamie attempts to barter for his release by reminding Locke of the wealth and power of his own father. This has an adverse effect, however, and Locke, angered by Jamie's arrogance and complacency, mutilates him by cutting off his sword hand. Later, while sitting with Brienne near the fire, Jamie has lost the will to live and will not eat because of his lost hand. At first, Brienne chastises him that he cannot take it when life gets tough comparing him to the stereotypical interpretation of a woman that she clearly is not. However, when she asks him why he helped her escape being raped, he does not reply, but begins to eat, puzzling Brienne. After both are delivered to Harrenhal, where Jamie's infected stump is treated by Kyburn, Jamie shocks Brienne by joining her in the communal bath. Jamie mocks Brienne, saying she was unable to protect Renly. Brienne stands up defiantly, and Jamie apologizes to her. He begins to confess what really happened when he killed the Mad King, to which she asks why he never told his side of the story before now. The stress of relating the tale, combined with his already weakened state, causes him to collapse into her arms. She calls aid for the Kingslayer, at which he whimpers that his name is Jamie. Lord Bolton allows Jamie to leave for King's Landing, but decides to keep Brienne in Harren Hall for abetting treason, in spite of Jamie's protests. Soon afterwards, Lord Bolton departs to attend Edmure Tully's wedding at the Twins, leaving Brienne in Locke's custody. Locke attempts to ransom Brienne to her father, who offers 300 gold dragons for her return. He rejects the offer as derisory, having believed Jamie's earlier lie that Brienne's father owned all the sapphire mines in Westeros. Instead, he throws her into a gladiatorial pit with a bear, giving her only a wooden sword to defend herself. After hearing that Brienne has been left at Locke's mercy at Harrenhal, Jamie compels his escorts to return to save her. Jamie jumps into the pit, and with the help of Steelshanks who is bound by his duty to ensure Jamie arrives in King's Landing safely, the two of them manage to escape the pit. Locke is outraged, but Jamie insists that Brienne accompany him, adding that Lord Bolton will not be pleased if he discovers that Locke placed his own amusement over Jamie's safe return to King's Landing. Locke relents, and Brienne and Jamie depart together. Jamie and Brienne arrive at the gates of the Red Keep. At first, 
Jamie is apprehensive at the thought of being recognized in his current condition, but after a peasant bumps into Jamie and calls him a country boy, Brienne smiles at Jamie, reassuring him. Her oath to Catelyn becomes more important than ever, following her death at the Red Wedding, and her discovery that Arya is not present at court, contrary to what Littlefinger previously told Catelyn.